Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Pumila Dwaba. Uh, thank you for joining me. Welcome to my new subscribers. I think when I left to go on my break on maternity leave, I was on like 120 subscribers or something. And then Brendan took over and now we are on 140 something. We're almost on 150K. So welcome, welcome. This is so exciting. And yeah, guys, thank you for continuing to watch even when I wasn't here. Um, let's get right into it i'm officially back uh i think we started with the what do you call it my conference which a lot of you supported i'm so grateful and if you are subscribed which you should be to brendan's channel he just started an amazing um project if i can call it that free to worship and i've been back on on that side supporting him um so yeah if you're not subscribed to brendan's channel please head on over you're gonna love it disclaimer there will no longer be covers on my channel there will no longer be music on my channel if you're looking for covers and music it is on his channel straight to the video i am going to share my labor and delivery story with baby number two where do i start um firstly sure my pregnancy compared to pregnancy one was amazing like this pregnancy with zani was beautiful i think i was also very relaxed um it was most of it was under lockdown and i didn't gain too much weight i was in a healthy state no swollen feet the nose did get big but not as big as the first time like most of the issues i oh and there was no morning sickness i think i probably had morning sickness like three times or so but to be honest with you this pregnancy was beautiful my first one was if i can almost say how <laughs> how um you can check that out but yeah this pregnancy was so beautiful so calm i think i can I mean, people say pregnancies are different, but I can almost connect it to my lifestyle. I had changed my lifestyle, um, relatively very healthy. I only stopped working out when the country shut down. I think that was around March, April. And yeah, but my house has stairs, so it was up and down the stairs anyway. So we can consider that workout. And then the day Zanya was born, fast forward for about, he was born by the way at, was it 38 weeks or 39 weeks, babe? 38 39 weeks nuru was born at 38 weeks by 37 weeks i was done i was tired i just didn't want anything anymore and then i just started having false contractions i think it's called false contractions false labor contractions so i just have like many contractions um for like a week at like 37 weeks i think it's because in my mind i expected to give birth at 38 weeks. i expected everything to happen the same way it happened with my first um baby but yeah so i'd have false contractions um and I, oh, oh and and then i would it, and then it, it seemed like my water was breaking but it wasn't breaking i was it was just the what do you call it the discharge because you know when you're about to give birth the va vagina prepares itself and you have a whole lot of discharge so i thought no my water's breaking and drips and drabs i know don't laugh at me luckily i had my midwife on my phone we could just text and i could just tell her what's happening and she could calm me down but um with in terms of checkups throughout the pregnancy because of COVID, Brendan couldn't be present. So it wasn't all too great. So on the day of giving birth, it was a Sunday night. We were chilling on the couch. We were watching service. We first start with Elevation at half past three and then automatically it's Transformation Church at six o'clock, usual Sunday. Then at, se at seven o'clock, half past seven, we'd put Nuri to bed. After we put Nuri to bed, we were chilling on the couch. I don't even know what we were doing. And then around, I think eight, I started getting these mini contractions. I was just like, oh, it's one of those again. It happens every Sunday. So whatever, I don't say anything. I'm no longer texting my midwife, no longer texting my mom and sister, because my mom and sister, we are on a, an iMessage group. I'm no longer texting my sister-in-law. I'm no longer saying anything because I've like texted them like seven times saying, I think the baby's here. I think the baby's coming. So this time I was just like, you know what, girl, you're just going to be strong. Um, you won't die, whatever. Aye. It keeps going. It's almost like, I think nine now. It's happening and it's getting stronger. So Brendan says, okay, cool. Let's go up to bed. We switch off the lights. We're off to bed. We're going to bed. We're going to chill in bed. I will, when I get upstairs, this thing, it's now getting a little stronger. So I say, you know what, let me take a bath. 
I know every time I've taken a bath, the pain would go away. So if the pain doesn't go away, then for sure, for sure, I am in labor. Okay, I take a bath, I put my bath, my bubble bath, and I relax. Uh, even in the bath, I'm still getting pains and contractions. I, I tell Brendan, Brendan, it's happening. Tonight, the baby is coming. This is around nine o'clock. I text my, okay, and then I start timing my contractions now. I can't remember, I think they were about seven minutes apart. Everything happened so quick, guys, like I can't remember properly. I think they were about seven minutes apart. And my mid, and then I tell my midwife what's happening. And she says, okay, once they're three minutes, four minutes apart, come to the hospital. I'm like, okay, cool. I, I get out the bath. And then when a contraction comes, I feel it. I feel it. Now, here's why I feel it. Because you cannot fight a contraction. And the more you fight it, the more painful it is. So I, luckily two weeks before that, on Father's Day, actually, I watched a documentary by Will Smith. And he was talking about learning to surrender to pain. So that's what I did with my contractions. I literally surrendered to the contraction. So when the contraction happened, take a deep breath and feel it. And it's damn painful. I'll feel it, feel it. After the contraction is done, carry on. I'd fetch my bags and then told Brendan to call my sister-in-law, call my mom. My sister-in-law was coming because she stays like 30 minutes away. So she was going to come spend the night with Nuri. Um, and obviously my mom's in Middleburg, so she was also going to come. But obviously she couldn't come in the middle of the night. So we, I'm busy packing. Brendan's also now packing, getting the camera. We're packing our bags. Then a contraction happens. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. And then I did my... Guys, I did the lock method. Liquid oil and and cream on my hair just before going to the salon to the to the to the hospital and i even plait my hair that's that's how chilled i was um get my contraction and then i do my hair because i wanted to have cute hair the last time i was not cute at the hospital so this time i just want to get there and be the cute girl you know those people who get to a hospital about to give birth and they're looking cute well the first time i was not that so this time this is what i wanted and then it was around 10, um, the contraction started getting closer and closer and closer and we had to wait for my sister-in-law. By around, I think 11, if I'm not mistaken, around 11 o'clock, they were three, four minutes apart. And then we got in the car and we went to hospital. The drive to the hospital wasn't that bad, actually. It, I think maybe let me stop downplaying. I think this time I really, um, expected the pain you know when you expect something and you know how it's supposed to be then you're kind of okay with it so like the first time i didn't know what to expect so this time i knew what to expect so it wasn't like terrible terrible but it was it was still bad like let me not even downplay contractions we get to the hospital around i think midnight 12 o'clock my midwife hadn't arrived yet so we we get in we get in the bed the lady comes and she puts the things the machines on me to check the baby's heartbeat and we're sitting there and Brendan was busy taking videos of me we were having fun actually ne? Yeah, we were having fun this time good I was time. it was a good time this time I wasn't swearing at anyone I wasn't giving anyone bad eyes we were saying we were listening to music remember the last time I had a playlist prepared um but when it was time to give birth, I shouted at Brendan and told him to shut that nonsense. Well, this time it was different. And yeah, we were playing around, having a conversation. I was chatting to my mom while waiting. And then my midwife got them. And then she checked me. And then my water hadn't broken this time. The last time my water broke first, then the contraction came. But this time my water hadn't broken. So she's like, okay, cool. Let's walk, break that water. We, we ruptured. And then I think I was eight centimeters dilated. Oh, then how broke loose <laughs> i think after she broke my water everything went crazy then as usual if you've given birth you'll know the first sign is you will need to take a dump i would like to bring babe i need to take a dump i need to go to the toilet and that's when he knew he had to fill up the water and yes i had a water birth again and in the same room that nuri was born in so it was special same room same hospital and same midwife um except my mom and sister weren't in the room this time because of covid so only brendan could be um in the room and then he filled up the water and then he closed the water too soon and the water was cold and then my midwife was like well what are you doing the water has to be warm and it has to be fuller so i had to wait now for the water to fill and now i'm going through the most now like things are hectic like now i just want to cry i just want this baby out of me things like i just need to take a poop and no one's letting me take a poop i'm not allowed to go to the toilet i have to wait for this water and it's hectic 
And then the water filled up and then I got in and then something about the reason I choose a water birth is that it's really calming. Water is calming for me and when I get in the water I get to relax. And oh and no meds, no injection. I couldn't even have that gas thing because of COVID. So guys it was 100% natural 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 and it was too late to take anything because sometimes they give you like a light um, injection I didn't get anything it was 100% 100% natural got on the water and then it was time to push yeah guys flames pushing this time was extremely extremely hard with Nuri pushing was easy I think in 15 minutes she was out um, I didn't feel any burning. Honestly, I don't. Five huh? Five 45 minutes with Nuri. But she was tiny. She was like 2.3. Yeah. 2.3, 2.1, 2.3. Yeah. And with Nuri, it was easy. The hard thing with Nuri was the contractions. But once I got pushing high boy, it was easy. With the Zani, yo, I struggled. I think I had to give a few pushes. Um, so we started pushing. Um, the most important thing with a natural birth is to listen to your midwife. Don't push when they say don't push. You only push through a contraction. So I had to wait. I think I, I wait. I went through about five contractions in the water before he started actually coming out. And then she asked me if I want to feel the head. I was like, uh, no, I just want to get this job done. And the burning sense, there's something called, what is it called? Ring of fire. I didn't know about it until this time. The ring of fire was super, super hectic. It was burning, burning, burning. Like it, I honestly, at some point I was just like, um, to my midwife, I just want him to come out. Like I can't do it anymore. It's so painful. Like you get, I think when you're giving birth, you get to a point where you just like, honestly, I, I, I can this thing just come out of me? Like it, it doesn't matter anymore. Just take it out of me, you know? And in that moment, I, I don't know how it happened, but Brendan played a song. Babe, how did you play the song? Did I ask for it? Yeah, so I, there was a moment where I realized I was struggling so hard to push. I had no strength to push anymore. And it, 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 was, it was really hard. I expected it to be easy, but I had no strength to push anymore. And I realized in that moment that I am pushing with my strength. Like I'm going, but I'm not doing it right. I, I, I had to let go and surrender and let my body and God do what he needed to do. So what I'm trying to say that before I was just trying to do this with my own strength. I was trying to get it over and done with make, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't in the moment. And then I realized that, okay, cool. I need to be, I need to be present. And I basically said a prayer and I said, God, I fully surrender. You've given my body the ability to do this. So I surrender and I surrendered to the pain. I allowed my body to feel every single push, 100% feel it and not try to avoid it or not try to get over that pain. But I let my body feel it. And I asked while I was praying, I asked Brendan to play the song, Have My Heart. <gasps> That song got me through delivery. And yeah, he played that song, I think, more than once. How many times did you play it? Three times, four times? I played it once, but it's like a nine minute song. Oh, he played it once, but it's a nine minute song. But he played that song, and that song, I literally felt like God was in the room and he was holding my hand. And that's how Zani came out. He came out in the world to that song and I just surrendered to the pain. I felt the pain. I felt the push. I think my delivery was about 30 minutes pushing, just pushing, feeling the pain. And he was a big boy. He was about three kilograms, ne? 3.3. Yeah. He was about 3.3 kilograms. And I remember that first moment of holding him. I, the picture that Brendan took is similar to the picture with Nuriwe. I'm literally just crying because I can't believe God did it. And the words I always utter is thank you, Jesus. Every time with Nuri, this time it's just thank you, Jesus. You, you helped me. It's, it's done. It is finished. But I think the most, one thing I remember the most about this delivery was surrendering to pain. 
letting go and i keep hearing that song and that's and we covered it before but now it's got so much meaning to me is that you can have my heart be the lord be be my god you know and yeah so every time that song plays i literally cry i get goosebumps because i remember that morning that eve yeah well it was morning that morning when my son was born and it was 1 a.m in the morning so yeah so contractions started at around 9 10 I was in hospital at 12 at one half past one my son was born and yeah and we had our skin to skin Brendan had his skin to skin and yeah and I stayed overnight at the hospital uh, Brendan couldn't he went home and he was back in the morning and we left the hospital at 11 and basically that was it it was it was i'm so grateful to god that it was such a, a beautiful delivery and beautiful with the pain beautiful with the mess and yeah and i have i've, I've had such a lovely midwife ayanda Ngiti, um who's been amazing who supported me yo she's made delivering a baby amazing she's so supportive i've heard some horror stories of nurses and midwives but she's so supportive she taught me how to listen to my body she taught me how to let my body do what it needs to do and she's just comforted me in a way she made um pregnancy and birth be such she makes it so beautiful like you she allows you to look at it in such a miraculous way so yeah on the 29th of june uh, Zani Lihumo was born. Zani means God's gift, gift from God, and Lihumo means wealth and abundance. And even with Nuri, Nuri is Nuri Litabo. The names I get, I feel like God whispers to them, whispers the names of my children during my prayer, prayer time. So when I felt pregnant, I said, God, speak to me. Who is this child? What is his purpose on earth? And give me the names. And I felt God's was saying he's a gift to you guys. He's my gift to you guys. And he is a gift of wealth. He is a gift of abundance. He is a gift of blessings. And that's how we that's how we named him. And he's a big boy. He's growing so so fast. He is the sweetest boy. They're very different with Nuri, but they absolutely love each other. Um our first day home was amazing. One thing I did do is start preparing Nuri about for a very long time. So she knew when she rubbed my belly that she's rubbing zani so i'd be like where's zani and she would rub the belly and she knew that he was in there so about two weeks before i started showing her pictures and videos of babies and i'd say baby baby and she started learning the term baby baby and when we got home i said here's baby and she was happy but she was a bit confused of okay what's happening who's this new person mom brought home and but yeah she's adjusted the funny story though is on i think the second day when i was breastfeeding zani because uh, i am still breastfeeding nuri um she ripped out my boob out of his mouth and she put it in her mouth so that was a funny moment i think she doesn't under she didn't understand who's, who's this now taking my stuff but i've learned to breastfeed both of them at the same time so i'll have zani here and i'll have nuri sitting next to me and now she even helps me breastfeed so um when zani hasn't properly latched she'll literally put my boob in the mouth and when i'm changing her di his diaper she gives me wipes even though she'll rip out like 10 wipes at the same time but you know it's that act i think it's it's just that bond may involving her so much and she cares i remember the other day zani was crying and i was busy with something and i couldn't attend to him um immediately so every time zani is crying i say okay baby okay i'm coming and so i couldn't attend to him and nuri heard him crying and she took her took his dummy and she's like okay 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 <laughs> and she tried to put his dummy uh her, his dummy in his mouth and it's just those beautiful moments she's a very protective sister if she doesn't like she doesn't just allow anyone to touch him um she's very protective when my helper first tried to pick him up she pushed him away so she's very protective but she absolutely loves him um she's adjusting very very well she loves being a big sister but i think it's also important for us to what we've prioritized is giving her the exact same attention, the exact same love we've always given her and really, really involving her and trying our best to not make her feel 
um, like her place has been taking. For example, on days, on mornings where I'm feeling overwhelmed with Zani, and Brendan will go say, come, let's go watch some Peppa Pig or come, let's go take a walk, you know, just to make sure that she knows that she's important. Or we'll swap around, Brendan will be the, with the baby and I'll say, come Nuri, let's go for a walk. So yeah, um, being a family of four is overwhelming good and bad it's a lot a lot i won't even lie but we have such amazing help um our helper is amazing we've had her for almost three years three years now yeah since we got married and she loves our children she loves our son she's like best friends with nuri in fact the other day she was busy on the floor nuri was just climbing on her back they are best friends my mom um comes in and she helps us a lot and my sister in love she's like she's like the hero like you know when there's that one person you just want to do everything for she's that she comes in she's been coming in for the first month she's been when my mom left she was coming in every single day by the time she leaves she cooks for us and then she'll still go home and cook for her husband and on weekends some weekends she'll take nuri for a sleepover because they like best friends so she'll take nuri for a sleepover so yeah man a support system is so important especially with two under two because it does get overwhelming and brendan and i are self-employed we have a whole lot of work so we need a whole lot of work and that's just how we do it but yeah man it's been amazing it's honestly it's a it's it's god's gift children are a gift i never knew i needed they've opened up a whole new world for us um yeah we i, I love being a boy mom i love being a girl mom we've got our uh what do you call it pigeon pair and that's just how we planned our kids how, how we planned our family when we started talking about family because yeah if we have kids it's gonna be a girl as a firstborn and a boy as a second born and that's just exactly how it happened so yeah i'm so blessed with my angels nuri and zani they love each other he's sweet he's beautiful we don't know who he looks like yet um but yeah he's almost he's six weeks now Oh, by the time you watch this video, he'll be six weeks. And you know what happens at six weeks. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. But yeah, that was my story. And yeah, we're so grateful for the love and the support we get from you guys. It's been overwhelming. The well wishes, the congratulations. And yeah, I Mrs. Mom is officially back. Thank you, guys. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are pregnant, all the best. Don't worry about all these other things. Just pray for god's peace and just be in the moment be present don't worry about unnecessary things be present and if you're a mom of two or three all the best try and be present and try and get as much help and if you're breastfeeding two kitties all the best at that too um it's not always easy it's overwhelming but you know what the blessing covers the the down moments i don't want to even downplay that it's always easy and it's always rosy and sunshine it's not always sometimes it's tears but this time i've allowed myself to cry i'll literally say to britain i think i need a cry and then i'll have my cry i'll have my 20 minutes in the bath and just my alone time to also prioritize myself so that i can be the best and i'm back in gym i'm back with richard i'm so excited on my health journey and that always makes me feel the best version of myself i am sharing my journey on you on on instagram i do show videos and it's you know the difference between this time and last time that last time i was so conscious of my body i was so uncomfortable but now wow i embrace it i even took a picture of how i look now and i posted it because that's how proud i am of my body i'm actually in love with how i look i'm in love with what my body has been able to do and that makes me want to just take care of it so i'm very vulnerable it's not easy being back at the gym it's not easy eating clean but it's worth it and that's how i get back to being the best version of myself so thank you guys for watching i hope you join me on my health journey that we can all be healthy and yeah if you're still pregnant all the best and yeah i love you guys and we'll see you soon take care